When I came in here as principal uh, 12 years ago, in short time, we had lost about 80% of our professors. In short time, through retirement, about 80% of the distinguished professors at Kefield had retired. You know, Professor Walron, the medical man, you know, and you can go Professor Carnegie in law, Professor Marshall in history, Professor Cadogan in mathematics, you know, right across the faculties. The senior leadership of KFIL had moved into retirement. And within short time, the KFIL academics had done so much publishing and research, and we, we gave them a charge. We need to rebuild the professorial class at KFIL. In short time, the publication and research agenda of this campus mushroom, and we were able to rebuild the professor class. We now have more professors now than ever before in our history. And it was a response to a particular call that we had to rebuild the quality and the quantity of research. So we were very pleased by that. But also, too, we've had at KFL excellent administration. You know, the academics can do their part. But unless you have good administration to make sure that everything works smoothly and effectively, transparently, we've had great registrars, we've had great bursars, we've had we've had people in our bursary and administrations. I mean, we have had we have built a very coherent university family at Kefil. And this was something that was bequeathed to me because you must remember I was a dean here at KFIL when uh, when Sir Keith Hunt was principal. And I, I was a dean in his cabinet, so to speak. And I, I learned most of what I know about university administration from sitting with Sir Keith. And uh, his principal vision was always maintain the collegiality of the campus. Maintain the coherence, the family feel, be transparent, speak openly and fairly to your colleagues and always have their back. Always have their back and look out for the interests of the students. So, so you, you take those groundings and then you apply them. And I believe that uh, what Sakif had, had told us about administration, uh, we had applied it successfully. So I believe that the campus has come uh, uh, some ways. Uh, we were not, I am not pleased that we have reached where we wanted to. Of course, we've had some reversals, some very serious reversals. I would have loved to have seen a deeper internationalization. That was what we had conceptualized. Uh, I certainly would love to have seen uh, a, a, a library at Kefil, a, a data center, a 21st century learning center that would be a modern library. We have not been able to, to do that. And it is now a critical part of our international accreditation. Uh, that did not come into being, but I am still hopeful that this will happen uh, in the very short time. It's going to be vital for the academic standards of this institution. 2007, uh, we, as a senior management team, we went into retreat. And uh, the title of our retreat, the management retreat, was called This is Not a Fire Job. And we must remember that my discipline is economic history. And in my discipline, we have examined uh, 80 or 90 recessions in the world in the last 400 years. So the study of recession, boom and bust, and growth and development in the world in the last four to 500 years is my discipline. This is what I've been trained to do, to read trends in economies. This is my profession. And in 2007, we went on a retreat and we said, this is not a drill, it is coming. And it's coming and it's going to impact on this island, it's going to impact on the Eastern Caribbean, and it's going to destabilize the financial base of the university enterprise in the Eastern Caribbean. We saw it, we read it, and we went into retreat, and it hadn't yet come. But we took some very serious corrective actions. We took some corrective measures in order to generate revenues for ourselves, to commercialize the campus, to establish income generating streams so that when the recession would hit, we would have revenues to hold ourselves together when the government was in difficulty. 
and it is precisely a significant part of those income generation strategies that we have developed that have helped us to pay our bills in this recession. So we read it correctly. And this is the result of collective action. And at Cavill, we have always moved in that collective way to plan for the future, to strategically plan. So I believe uh, the campus is in a relatively good place. We, we are concerned, of course, by the collapse of our enrollment. You know, a 30% collapse in one year with the, the threat of another 10% coming. I mean, it is, it is disturbing. And uh, we are doing all we can internally, as well as engaging with the Minister of Education to see how we can mitigate this, how we can turn it around. I was very, very pleased when the government announced that it is their intention to work towards the rebuilding of the enrollment. Remember you once referred to the average student of the Cape Hill campus as a working woman with at least one child. Um, yet recently in the print media, you were saying that the, there's the current uh, stance from the Barbados government towards the UE fee structure has been a 20-year retrograde step. And yet this morning, here you are uh, praising the now ruling uh, Democratic Labour Party. Um, there will be viewers and listeners out there who will want to know what exactly caused this sudden um, road to Damascus um, expression. Okay. Well, I, I think what you have done there is to establish what I call a straw man. You, you built a straw man and then you took it down. Um, I, I didn't recognize. I didn't recognize what it is you had described. I have always been. Um, I have always been very celebratory of all our political parties. The Democratic Labour Party is a great is a great political party. It has done tremendous for this country. Uh, no one can deny that it hasn't brought this country a significant way in its, in its 60 years. I mean, not to celebrate an institution like that is to be disingenuous. But that is not the point. <coughs> the point is what we are describing is how uh, policy has impacted a particular social group. I did not state, I did not state that uh, the impact of the policy has been to set back the country. That is a, that is a, gen, a journalistic construction. What I did say was that the policy had taken back our enrollment 20%. And there's a significant difference between saying that a policy has driven back your enrollment 20% to say it has driven back the campus 20 years or driven back the country 20 years. It has driven back the enrollment to what it was 20 years ago. And that was specifically what is being articulated here now. We are back to mid-1990s enrollment levels. When we spoke about, when I spoke about the impact of the policy upon social groups, bear in mind that in the formulation of a national policy, a critical element of that formulation would have to be who will bear the burden of this policy. A working class woman China. That is a demographic package. Now, you would also agree that the most vulnerable social group in all Caribbean societies, the most vulnerable social group in all Caribbean societies are working class unmarried mothers. This is the most vulnerable social group in all Caribbean societies, working class unmarried mothers. So if a policy inadvertently carries a greater burden on that group, then there are questions to be asked. I did not suggest, or would never suggest, that this was a deliberate attempt to, to no, punish, no, no, no. or it was deliberate, it was a strategy. Clearly not, clearly not. That, that is the that is sin. What you're looking at is how a policy, in its effect, impacts upon a particular social group. And then you have to ask the question, in the revision of that policy, in the critical discourse of that policy, should these factors not be taken into consideration in order to do an amelioration? In order to do an amelioration. These issues, now this is our rule. 
the role of academics, the role of the university, the role of professors and intellectuals in the society is to scrutinize these things and to analyze these things and bring them to the attention of policymakers. These are conversations that I have with Minister Jones on a regular basis. We will have these conversations with our governments because we will wish them to be aware of the implications of policy. It would be irresponsible of university leaders not to share with policymakers the consequences of policies so that they can adjust if they so desire. And this is what we have to do, and this is what this is what we must do. Now, it is it is therefore insufficient, and it would be unprofessional of us to say, well, the impact of this fee policy is that four and a half thousand students can no longer attend university. That is true. But then you have to analyze those four and a half thousand students. Who are they? Who are those four and a half thousand students? Break the analysis down. Present to your governments the detailed analysis, not the general surface analysis, the detailed analysis of the impact so that they can see very clearly where they have to adjust if they want to adjust. And that, of course, was the burden of the presentation. So, Harry, uh, we have our final question from our online chat. Uh, the question is, we understand that there is to be a new acting principle of the open campus. Can you say why a principal has not been appointed? And the second part of this question is, are there any plans to revamp the open campus? The, the open campus, we imagine, in the years ahead, will be the strategic instrument that will drive us more into the global space. We expect the open campus to be recruiting students on a global basis all over the world. We expect the open campus to become part of the outreach agenda of the landed campus, the physical campuses. We imagine, therefore, the open campus to be like the yeast that will enable the cake to rise. The open campus is therefore very important. We have had a change of leadership. The university, I believe in its wisdom, has said the open campus is now entering into a, it's a, a maturing stage of its development. What we will do is to establish a task force to see how best the open campus can be reorganized to serve the university and the region even more so, more effectively in a more robust fashion. So while we are conducting this assessment to see how best to energize the open campus and to give it a greater and more significant remit we have appointed uh, a principal for one year. And we chose that principal, uh, Dr. Longsworth. We chose her strategically because she was the first director of programs for the Open Campus. She is the one who helped to build out the various sites of the Open Campuses across the Caribbean. Her knowledge, her knowledge of the Open Campus at this moment in time is unparalleled. With the retirement of Professor Simmons MacDonald, the principal, I do not believe there's anyone in the open campus who knows more about it, its structure, its architecture, its DNA, as well as Dr. Longsworth. So we've asked her to be the principal for the one year while we review and research. And we were very, very happy that we were able to persuade her to take up this responsibility. She is an excellent university administrator. It's with making sure that the UWIA's enterprise in Barbados serves this country and the region maximum capacity. This is not about Van der Stroot. He is the Prime Minister of Barbados. He has a country to run. He has a government to take care of. I do not wish or do not enjoy any conversations about personality. A time is going to come when we are all old and retired and then we can speak about our personalities. But right now we have work to do. Right now we have a lot of work to do. Uh, we have a campus to put back on its feet. Uh, we have a country to drive out of recession. Uh, we have a region to help focus. The university has a lot of work to do. And this is my concern. My concern is about the items that are in front of me. And I can tell you this, I will not be distracted by these kinds of conversations. 
because we need to rebuild this university. We need to rebuild this region. We have a regional economy that is sluggish. We have to work with our governments and our private sector to enhance the betterment of Caribbean peoples. And this has to be our strategic focus. It has to be our focus day and night, day and night, until we get this region where we want to have it.